I started this one with nothing to go on. It says Underwoods Inks. No location, no leads on the internet. I found a few sites where people were asking around if anyone knew anything about this bottle. So I'm itching to see what turns up for this one on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. <laughs> So I started with the newspapers. I found a few 1860s Underwoods inks in Australia newspapers. I don't think they have much to do with this story, but I thought I'd mention it. And after a little bit more looking, I did find a name, Frederick Underwood, inks. It's listed in the Brooklyn, New York paper in 1889. So let's see where this leads us. Ancestry, city directory for Brooklyn in 1889 turns up these Underwoods. There's that Frederick W. Underwood. It says he's a chemist. And look at the address, 143 Grand. Now look at this John Underwood and Company, Inks, and it says 143 Grand Avenue. Oh, and John says he's also a chemist. Then there's also a Thomas down here, also working with Inks at 147 Grand, which is probably the same building. Okay, so let me just dig around a little bit and see what I can find. So this story is about John Thomas Underwood. He was born in 1857 in London. He came to America and seems to have settled somewhere around Brooklyn, New York in 1880 when he was about 23. The first directory he shows up in is 1883. Chemicals. In 1884, this says Underwood's Cobalt Inks. And it says for 20 years have been used by the largest bankers etc. in Europe, India, Australia, and China. So this is that Australia company popping up here. And it says it's distributed by Ulrich and Kingsley, also in Buffalo. And I found them in the 1884 directory, and it shows that they sell books, stationery, and they do some engraving. In 1885, I don't see the Underwood company formed yet, but in 1886, John T. Underwood and Company is formed. It looks like at the corner of Grand Avenue and VC. Now 30 VC is this corner, although it doesn't intersect with Grand Avenue here. So now there seems to be two Underwoods inks floating around New York. And here's a newspaper ad from 1886, but since it doesn't say John Underwood and Company, I'm assuming this is an ad for the Australian one. This 1889 article talks about a suit John Underwood filed against a Henry Gerber for infringement of patent, which he lost. So 1890 is the first John Underwood ink that I found. And this 1891 mentions that Frederick W. died and John is the executor. They are brothers, by the way. And here are some more 1897 ads for some Underwood's inks. Now, I'm not sure how popular John's inks are compared to these Australian ones by this time. So which ones are these ads for? Uh, to be completely honest, I'm not sure. And to be honest, the bottle could be either one as well. I assume it's the American one, but honestly, there's no way to know. Okay, so here's a 1903 ad in Quebec, and it specifies John Underwood's inks. And it also has a picture of a bottle here. So we know he's getting out there. This 1903 ad happens to be the last time that we see him associated with inks though. Next year in 1904, he's now listed with typewriter supplies. An ad in Arkansas mentions Underwood typewriters. This 1905 census shows John's household. He's got his wife, who's 15 years younger than him, his daughter, his uncle, and five servants living there. It lists him as a typewriter manufacturer. I'm a little confused with all these ads all over the place though. Here's one from Kentucky. It says Underwood Typewriter Company. It looks like there's an office on Main and 4th in Louisville. Now, did they open more offices? In 1910, the census shows him as president of a typewriter company. It seems to have been doing pretty well. Here's a 1913 write-up in the paper in Hartford, Connecticut. It says, important new industry here, Underwood typewriter adding machines in demand. Machines made of highest grade. This is in December and it says in January this year, two booming businesses were constructed here at the Chamber of Commerce building. 
It says the John T. Underwood Company are manufacturers of typewriter adding machines, a class of instruments quite new in the line of office appliances. It says how Underwood had been developing this adding machine to be complemented with the typewriter. It mentions how this instrument had been very useful for the railways, such as Pennsylvania Railroad, banks, such as Bank of France at Paris, apparently this was a prominent well-known bank, insurance, and government. It says this machine possesses five registers, and great pains have been taken with its artistic appearance. But this comes secondary to its design of the mechanical features and accuracy of workmanship. It goes on to say that the registers, each one represents one column of figures. Each machine possesses one to five registers. This machine can hold paper anywhere between 10 and 26 inches wide. It mentions how well these machines were selling, stating that one customer has already ordered 50 of them for their office, which is quite a lot since they are selling between $525 and $985 each. It says there are about 220 workers employed currently, so that gives us an idea of how he's doing at this point. In 1915, the Hartford location is booming and needing more room. They say there's 200 people employed at the Connecticut location and 100 people at the New York location, but they're looking to open a space that can employ 1,000 workers. Now skip ahead to 1930, and he's still listed as a typewriter manufacturer. In 1933, this article says that a guy named Horace Teal, who was manager of the New York branch, died last night. Then, in 1937, John Underwood himself died at the age of 80. It says that he had been in poor health for about two years now. Now this mentions that he was president of Underwood Typewriter Company for 33 years until it merged with Elliott Fisher Company in 1927, and he was chairman at that point. This says that the Underwood Company was incorporated in 1898, but it changed its name to Underwood Typewriter Manufacturing Company in 1903, which coincides with what we see when it changes from the ink ads to the typewriter ads. Now this obituary actually states that his dad came over to America while John was in school in France, and his dad was the one who founded the John Underwood & Company, which manufactured at that time carbon paper, ink, and ribbons for typewriters. It says that after his dad's death, John was interested in the production of typewriters. Okay, so that's interesting. On his write-up on findagrave.com, someone had written, he and his father established Underwood and Company, and it says they pioneered the manufacture of typewriter supplies, including carbon paper and other accessories to support the typewriters being manufactured by Remington and Sons. In 1894, Franz Wagner, a German-born inventor, developed a typewriter design that finally made the print fully visible to the operator as it was being typed. In 1895, Underwood bought the patent from Wagner and improved the design, making it a Underwood typewriter. It says his new company grew rapidly and was producing 200 typewriters per week in 1898. In 1901, Underwood introduced its number five model, which was sold in the millions over 30 years of production. It says some of the new features Underwood included were a ribbon selector, a backspacer, and a tabular. By 1915, Underwood had created the standard for the entire typewriter industry, and the Underwood company replaced Remington as the number one typewriter manufacturer in the world. And by that time, the Underwood Company was producing some 500 machines a day. Now, I don't know that much about typewriters, but I've never heard of an Underwood typewriter, but it seems like if I did know anything about typewriters, I probably would know them, right? So let's skip ahead a little bit to 1945. That's the next time that I see anything in the paper. And it's for a wanted ad for a typist with some knowledge of bookkeeping at John Underwood and Company. So it's still in business. 1955, Darwin James, president of John Underwood and Company, died of a heart attack yesterday as he left the office. Now skipping ahead to 1963, the wife of Ronald Hart, who is president of the John Underwood and Company, makers of carbon paper and typewriter ribbons, well she died. 
And that's the last time that I see anything regarding the Underwood Company in the papers or on Ancestry. So I don't know how long they stayed in business. Like I said, I can't honestly be sure if this Underwood's Inks is this company or apparently the, the much more famous Underwood's Inks from Europe or Australia. This company had a short-lived ink manufacturing company that lasted from about 1886 till about 1903. Now this bottle could fit in that range, but I want to say that it looks a little older than 1886 to me. I could be wrong. Maybe you guys can help me date it better. It's blown and it's a little crudely made. Look at some of these imperfections. It's got this little whittled look to it as well. It's really pretty aqua. And like I said, I'm hoping that this is the American Underwood inks because I don't have the resources to research the Australian one. And that's it for today's story. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.